I mean, hey, don't sound so disappointed. I mean, no. Know, what so are you we, doing? What we are, are going to we're going to start with a smudging. With a smudging for this episode. Please explain to people the smudging uh, process. Smudging. This is sage. This is actually. Yeah. Do not burn the studio down. Oh, right. Look at them. They're all scattering over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, come on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So between oh, Archangel wow. Michael here, and a, it's coming your way, yeah, it's Phil. Coming my way. It goes toward the evil. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, listen, anytime there's somebody smoking a cigar or marijuana, it goes toward you. <laughs> I swear to God, I must be. I think it's because I inhale. I take because you know I'm a little short of breath. <laughs> I think I'm inhaling it, and it all goes in. And I'm like, that's, oh, my God. That's very funny. I mean, look at it. There's no yeah. wind, right? It's coming so right to me. There's many Does it really go to the evil? No. Here's what happens. I'm going to panic. I mean, I've done a few ways. bad things. Many. Oh, yeah. Get in line. You mm -hmm. would, what, what was happening? What did Costello say? Yeah, you were two million other guys. Um, at, when the moon comes up, right. I become a wolf. <laughs> Lon Chaney. You and two million other guys. Friend. Abner Costell, me Frankenstein. Yeah, I could watch that. Him. I'm not kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I've only seen that movie 6,000 times. Yeah. And when I'm in the... Oh, I shouldn't joke about this stuff. Well, every time I joke about it comes through. So when I'm in a nursing home, hopefully in another 20 years, and you walk in, John, and say, ask the nurse, how's he today? 20 I'll be, years, you expect me to walk in anywhere? Yeah, well, you're an athlete. No, they'll, they'll, you're an athlete. They'll gurney me into your room. <laughs> All right, just say, what's it? And if you know I'm watching uh, Abner Costello meet Frankenstein for the six billion times, say, ah, he's okay. Because that old stuff makes me happy. Does old of stuff course. make you happy? Well, it, it, it depends. It yeah. depends. Like, you know, when I was a kid, I really got sucked into the old pro-World War II movies. You know, yeah. the Humphrey Bogarts, the John Wayne, I mean, the come on, William John Wayne. Bendix, the Sands of Iwo Jima. William oh Bendix? Oh, yeah, Life of Riley. <laughs> yeah, TV right. show. Right. Wow. Um, but yeah. back to the smudging. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, no, no. I, I, we could, I just, you know, I uploaded my little Parkside shorty rant. I really I, enjoyed it. Wearing my, my beautiful USA. embroidered USA cap. And, uh. I got to say, it was a pleasure uploading a five and a half minute video. Mm. I, I think it took me 15 minutes tops, and I had it on YouTube, Rumble, Spotify, <laughs> Amazon Music. I was done. Beautiful. I was done. Right. You, if you try to upload a one hour video, man, you sit there for several hours. Yeah. Anyway, smudging. Smudging goes way back, it goes back thousands of years. It certainly does. And um, when you burn, material to smudge and, and typically it's sage but it doesn't have to be mm. uh it scavenges dark or or negative energy now maybe it all really resides in intent did i bring any negative energy in this morning no i, I mean did, did that I, did that production did. guy back there did he say something about uh, me being negative because that'll be a problem for him when i'm no, done no you didn't okay if anybody did it was me um, so that all right. I got on a few few little horn lock friction points on social media today, but it's all good because Come that's on. what it's all about. That's what and that's if anybody cool. thinks that they're going to shut me the fuck up mm. uh, because they're going to oppose me or challenge me on social media, I welcome the challenge because I generally have thoroughly researched what I put on social media. And so when I get challenged, I either just, you know, let it go and I don't say anything or yeah. or I'm good with the joust, I really am. And by the way, for those of you who, who really aren't sure, I am an American through and through. Well, why wouldn't they be sure? I, what would you be, John? Well, well, no, it's just that there are far too many in today's society who have been completely brainwashed by, here comes that word, the commune Nazis. Mm. So I was called out today for using that word, but I was called out, you don't know what communism is. Uh, mm. It was an old friend from high school, and I said, look, you know, and, and I don't forget anything. So he had a, he and I had a previous little debate, debate on social media, but years ago, maybe it was like, I don't know, eight, nine years ago, I can't remember about the Russians and whatnot, and his family, they're not Russians, but they lived somewhere right along the Russian border. You know, 
generations ago. And apparently the Soviets slash Russians ran them all off of their generational homestead at gunpoint. You know, and if anybody doubts that the communists wouldn't have just killed them, wasted them, and taken the land, of course they would have. So, Aldous, if you're watching, and I suspect you're not, <coughs> uh, I don't forget that exchange, and I and I, I take it seriously. I do. But right now, for me to use the word communazi, I told you, I explained to you, it makes me sick to know that communist factions that were mentored by Saul Alinsky, who was an American hater and a communist, he mentored Barack Hussein Obama or Barry Osoto, whatever the hell his name really is, and he mentored Hillary Rodden Clinton. It's all one big incestual um, communist movement that has moved through it's not just the Democratic Party but boy it seems to be heavy in them now and um, what am I supposed to say about that and if you don't think that Joey boy Biden Brandon is just a very willing puppet of Barack Obama he was when he was VP and he still is now he still is now Obama didn't move out of Washington, D.C. like apparently every other president did, including George Washington. No, he set up offices just down the road, and he still lives in Washington, D.C. How do I know that? Because a former associate of mine has a townhouse, condo, whatever, just a couple blocks away. That's all good. He can live wherever the hell he wants. So now we've got... Isn't it weird how the CCP has gained such a foothold all through the United States? They practically own the institution that is Harvard, and that's not the only institution. All sorts of people from the CCP come here under the guise of being students or instructors, and, and, and they get their PhDs and whatnot, and they get their tickets punched, and meanwhile, they're spying for the CCP on us. They're taking all sorts of corporate and scientific information and stealing it. And if you think that certain factions in our government doesn't know that, you're fooling yourself. You're stupid. You're, you are stupid. Right. So, okay. So there is the lineage of the communist slow insidious takeover, the one that Khrushchev foretold. He did, right? Now, they're all through the whole political agenda that is Obama, Clinton, Biden. Absolutely. And, and if you don't believe it, just look it up. Look up Saul Alinsky. These are all communist wannabe sympathizers. Now, I'm not poking at just the Democrats. No, because as far as I'm concerned, Daddy Bush, Prescott Bush, funded and instructed the Nazis pre-World War II, pre-World War II. So if it's any, if it's any scalp scratch to you to hear that thousands of top Nazi military people and scientists, they didn't just sneak into the United States after World War II. No, they were invited with a red carpet to the United States. They were. And, uh, as soon as they got here, we started finding fluoride in the water, all sorts of weird experiments, uh, 30 million metric tons of serratia marquesans, which is a bacteria dumped by the Navy into the San Francisco Bay as an experiment upon the American people to see just how far this bioagent, which was a bacteria, would go. Seriously, experimenting on the African American population. I could go on and on and on. That's what we got from the Nazis that fled Europe post-World War II. So now, after all of that time, if you don't understand that the Nazis never went away and their epicenter apparently is in the Ukraine and the Azov Battalion 
helped in a big way murder upwards of 14,000 Russian-speaking Ukrainians in the Donbass region 14 years ago. And if you look at the YouTube videos of the the soldiers that are, are being interviewed, you know, holed up in their little, you know, clandestine, you know, military hideouts, their bunkers. This is before, this is before the, the, the Russian invasion. Because that's what it is. Um, they come right out and say, we are, we are Nazis. We are Nazis. Right in your face, we are Nazis. How did Zelensky get in power? NATO and the United States committed regime change. They ran out the previous president. Two, and, uh, 2014, I in believe. In 2014, that's right. And they put, they put the little high-heeled, dress-wearing, funny actor who just did a comedy series about being an actor and then he gets elected as the, the president or the whatever the hell, prime minister, or pre- I think it's the president, right? And all of a sudden, all of a sudden, art doesn't mimic reality. Reality mimics art, and Zelensky finds himself the NATO American puppet. Now, let's go a step further. We didn't do a countdown. We'll, uh, uh, countdown, yeah. countdown. Those days are over. Let's go a step further, okay? Putin made it very clear to the NATO authorities don't come any closer to our borders. Do not natify our surrounding countries. And of course, the United States and NATO said, oh, absolutely not. And they even, they even signed an accord. The name of the accord, of course, escapes me. Um, and what did they do right after they signed? They did exactly the opposite, and they started slowly moving toward Russian borders. Okay, really. And now out of this, we've got what I would say, the corporate big pharma military complex completely crushing the American population. The middle class is what they're coming after. How do I know that? Where do you think the United States gets $83 billion worth of military hardware and armament and ordnance? $83 billion dollars. Get your head around that number, people. 83 fucking billion dollars. And what do we do? We conveniently leave it there for our adversaries in the Middle East. Specifically, I think, Afghanistan. That's not the first time that we use that little trick. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We left left uh, an armory, a bunker of uh, weapons, ordnance, in Iraq. Apparently, it was like some huge, huge cache of, of military hardware and ammunition and all sorts of, of ordnance and, and weapons. And we left it. Oh, geez, we left the bunkers, you know, open and unguarded and unlocked. And then it fell into the hands of the Iraqis. That's either gross incompetence or it's treason. It's treason, or it's both. I would call it both, because I think you need to be a fucking idiot to commit that kind of, uh, any kind of treason. So, what did we do? Wherever we go, we keep fueling and edifying our enemies. Why? Because the corporate pharma military complex desperately needs the boogeyman to rear its head so that the corrupt, evil, mainstream media can shake the boogeyman in our faces, and then we all go, oh, keep us safe, keep us safe. And if the population doesn't get it, a couple false flag events are set off. Oh, there's a bomb that went off over here. This airport got hit. Oh, a military bunker was hit and people died. Damn those whoever they are. And all of a sudden, it's okay in the minds of the people to shovel over 83 fucking billion dollars worth of military hardware to the enemy. And it's done over and over and over and over again. And you know something? In a way, you can also call it money laundering. And I say that on my Jersey Alchemist little parkside shorty where I'm wearing my blue USA cap. Um, let's take it further. 
we commit regime change into Ukraine. And now we're creeping closer to the Russian borders against the agreement that the Russians had regarding NATO encroachment. Regime change, 12 or 14,000 Russian-speaking Ukrainians in the Donbass were murdered. Right. And now here we are committing a psyop upon the world and the American people to justify an ongoing war in the Ukraine against the Russians. And what is it costing us? Well, it's costing lots of people their lives. It sure is. And I don't think we've seen the worst of it yet. And we've sent upwards of 70 billion US dollars to the Ukraine military machine and tons and tons and tons of military hardware, which apparently now the Ukrainians are selling on the black market. And Zelensky, the NATO installed puppet, now he wants 1.7 billion. We can't fight the Russians unless we have an additional 1.7 billion a month. That's your money, people. That's coming out of your, breaking your asses. It's coming out of your money. So it's, it's 83 billion here while we're arming the enemy. We have to have a strong enemy so we can go back to them because after this Russian-Ukrainian thing kind of punks out, after it does, and I still think it's going to get worse before it punks out, oh, we'll just push the whole Middle East thing again because they've got $83 billion worth of armaments. By the way, let's talk about ISIS. Remember ISIS? You know who, who funded, who, who founded, who incepted ISIS? Four military intelligence agencies. Four, let's leave it at this. Four foreign and domestic intelligence agencies funded ISIS, and John McCain had everything to do with it. How do I know? He's posing, he's posing in still shot pictures, and they're all over the internet with the leaders of ISIS. You gotta be kidding me. You gotta be kidding me. ISIS was the perfect, perfect boogeyman to scare the shit out of people. And how did they scare the shit out of people with ISIS? CNN. CNN made Hollywood-esque production videos of people getting blasted in the back of the head, lined up by a ditch with their, their arms tied behind their back, and one by one, boom, 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 having their heads blown off as they fall into the ditch. Or the, the, the prison, ISIS prisoners on a beach wearing orange jumpsuits, where does a ragtag group of terrorists in the middle of the fucking desert, where do they get the camera crew? Where do they get the perfect orange jumpsuits? It was all done as a big, huge psyop to fuck with the American people and to fuck with the, the, the people of the world. Uh, you know, I could go on and on and on. The bottom line here, people, is you're just not paying attention. You're not putting the pieces of the puzzle together. No, you're not. Uh, Phil. Hmm. John, that was, well, this is, as this usual... Is, this is just a personal rant here. I, you know, one... I, I just... I am so disgusted with it. And let's go to the Patrick Ben David live podcast this morning that I, I watched about half of it just because I had things to do. And he had Ben Carson on right in his panel, live there in the studio. And uh, the further I watch Patrick Ben David, PBD, he's stupendous. He really, really is. He's one of the best podcast interviewers I've ever seen. And he puts, he puts it all in, into his productions. Um, I don't think he's been co-opted yet or threatened or given the... Uh, you know, that may, I don't think he's made it been made an offer yet that he can't refuse. Okay, but they did mention this whole thing about being made an offer you can't refuse today because when the topic turned to the Inflation Reduction Act, which blows my mind, it was put through because of um, what's his first name, Joe Manchin. Yes, Is it Joe. Joe. Because Joe Manchin 
somebody who had really kind of acted to the right of center, he all of a sudden comes out for this. Well, there's 49 other Democrats. One of them could have said no as well. Well, it always well, falls well, on him. Well, it yes, it does. But but and they I, were. But generally, the political world was kind of gobsmacked that hundred percent something changed in Joe Manchin in the last 30 days. And when 100%. PBD, Patrick Ben David, looked right at Ben Carson and said, what what changed? He, he was such a respected person who people thought they knew what he was thinking and how he would come down on what side. What changed in the last 20 or 30 days with Joe Manchin? And Ben Carson said, he was made an offer he couldn't refuse. And the panel says, well, like what? Like you think he was threatened or, you know, uh, threatened with death or leveraged or blackmailed. And he said, I think all of that's possible. He said so. He had to weigh his options. And then what he did was he says, well, where am I best off? With what offer and option that I've just been dumped on with, where will I be best off? And that's what it comes down to. That's what it comes down to. So now what do we get? We get all of this money, billions and billions, hundreds of billions of dollars being sucked out of the middle class because it's not coming from the billionaires and it's not coming from Skid Row. It's coming from the middle class. And the job of the Nazis is to kill off the middle class. And that is you folks, that's you, that's who it is. So hundreds of billions are going everywhere to the war machine in Afghanistan, to the Ukrainian uh, Nazi factions. And by the way, a friend of mine said, well, how could the Ukrainians have a Nazi faction if their leader is Jewish? Very easily, people, very, very easily. Zelensky is a puppet, he's a puppet. And if you think he wasn't given an offer he couldn't refuse, you are stupid. Right. So, uh, where does that leave us? Oh, my God. 87. How much is he given the IRS? How many? Uh, well, 88 well, million, billion. 88 it's, billion. It's 80 billion? 87,000 new. Uh, it's, I think it's 80 billion to bring on 87,000 new armed IRS agents, IRS. You know what this means, people? It means what the fuck? IRS, it means it means they haven't gotten all of your money. They haven't gotten all your money. They want you broke. They want you uh, depressed, destitute. They want to fucking starve you out, freeze you out, screw you out so that you say, oh, please, New World Order, Oh, please, tyrannical commu-Nazi New World Order, please come in and save us with your one-world government, with your no-cash society, with your, your new bullshit one-world religion. People, what is it that you don't see? What is it that you don't see? And, and by the way, any agenda that nudges the world population toward fewer conceptions, and greater death counts is all being done on purpose to facilitate this communazi takeover of God's humanity so that we can end up in the hands of scumbags like Bill Gates and Klaus Schwab uh, in their tyrannical New World Order. If I haven't said enough, I don't know what will wake you all up. But you got to wake up, people. You got to wake up. Yeah. And you know something? Whenever I watch somebody go on a rant like this on, on, on the internet, I think, how long is this guy going to live? They're going to take him out? They're going to take me out? Guess what? I see clearly. And uh, no, <laughs> no. I'm good. And I have no intention of leaving the earth plane anytime soon. Zero. So let's make that clear. People, you have got to go after voting. 
You have got to press your Congress people and your senators and your assembly people. Press them. Make sure, you know what? Next time there's a vote that comes up and there's drop boxes, put a lounge chair up. Get yourself, get yourself a, uh, a, you know, a winter jacket if it's going to be in November. Get yourself a little thermos and a cooler and take, take turns sitting guard. And if you see somebody come up with a satchel with many, 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 many ballots, you know what? Mm. Call the police or do something else that's kind and loving to dissuade them. And then they'll go down the street to another drop box, but there'll be, there'll be other patriots sitting guard at the other drop boxes. And you know something? It's abundantly clear to me that the Republicans and the Democrats both cheat in elections. They both do it. It isn't just the third world countries. It's been going on right under our noses for decades. It's not good, people. And if you Democrat leftists out there think it's all good because you think, well, you won this time, it's not good. What are you? What? It's not good. It's not good. And, and if you're going to say, oh, well, this is the natural course of, of, a, uh, of a capitalist system. It, it, it dies from within because it's a cancer. No, this is all being perpetrated on purpose by communazi factions that want to kill off the United States because the New World Order ain't never going to be with a strong, sovereign the United States. And I'm talking about a strong, sovereign American people and populace. Yeah, that's right. And let's talk about another thing. You think that you, you're, you're, you're brainwashed into hating the Russians? How stupid can you be? Stop allowing yourself to be brainwashed. You know what BRICS is? B-R-I-C-S? BRICS, the BRICS nations, it's Brazil, it's Russia, it's India, it's China, non-CCP China, and South Africa. And what are they doing? They've wriggled out from, and they've fought to not be co-opted and captured by the Rothschild evil New World Order banking system, and they are coming out with their own gold-backed currency, which is going to kill off the Federal Reserve note. And you know something? You might think that that's an affront to the sovereign circumstance that, that we are as Americans. The people, it's the bankers all along that have been co-opting and brainwashing humanity for years and years and years and years. The Rothschilds bankers have had a history going all the way back since pre-Napoleon. Pre that they fund both sides of a war. You know why? Because they never get shot and killed, they never get injured, and they never lose. That's who they are. So when I have uh, acquaintances and friends hear me say that, and they go, oh, you're anti, mm. no, no, you're just stupid. You are stupid. John, just follow the money. Yeah, yeah, but you know what? The money now, isn't the ultimate agenda. It's you have to have the money to build up the system that snuffs out freedom, that snuffs out free will, that snuffs out liberty. And if you think the Vatican under this particular imposter pope isn't all part of this, again, you are stupid. You are stupid. So people... People, 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 I've said it again and again and again and again and again. Get wise. Get smart. Speaking of Get Smart and Don Adams, one of my favorite TV shows. Barbara Feldon. Who was he fighting against? Chaos. Chaos. Dun, 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 dun. Love that show. Fighting against chaos. And you know something? The New World Order... And the Nazis have had chaos for us long set in their pipeline. I'm telling you the truth, people. Don't believe me, but you know something? Apathy is complacency is... is uh, Amen. You can't be apathetic about this, people, because, because you know, look, none of us are going to live for... Let's try to use a little logic here. Please, None too. of us are going to live forever. 
nobody is going to live forever. But if you're going to if you're going to go if you if you've been born into this crazy world and you're going to leave this world at some point whether it's at 6 months of age or 6 years or 60 years or 101 years you're going to come here and you're going to go don't you think the legacy that you leave in a way is actually just as important or not more important than the life you've lived anyway. It is, I promise you. How do I know that? Because nefarious people that have committed all sorts of horrible crimes against humanity, if they make a deathbed um, confession and they beg for forgiveness to the, to the one living God, well, that's a good step in the right direction. That's better. It's better that way than had they not come clean and, and uh, been contrite and, and begged for forgiveness. But people, it's your legacy that is exactly what a legacy is. It's, it's what lives on after you're physically gone from this world. If you just sit around eating popcorn and watching the world burn, you're complicit to the entire scheme. If that's what you want for your kids, and if your kids have kids, if that's what you want, God help you. God help you. So, I don't know, Phil. John, if you had to alchemize which, or shed light on the darkness that was revealed in this episode, I don't think it'll be a problem okay. to do it. Please. All right. I think the first step toward um, the alchemization of what's happening today. I mean, I don't think the world has ever been witness to such evil debauchery. And so much of it is coming out of our present um, ruling regime. And this isn't just about Joe, Joe, what's his name? Don't tell me. Oh, yeah, that guy. Brandon. Oh, Brandon. It's not just about him or Kamala Harris or, or Barack Obama or the Clintons. It's about all of them. We got here because of, as the American indigenous would say, ah, the left and the right are just two wings of the same bird. So it's been, it's been the deep state clandestine Republicans that really played a massive role in the Patriot Act and getting us into Af Afghanistan for 20, 21 years and 9-11. We won't do that because we can. That's an entirely different episode. And it's the Democrats now. So to my dear friends that think I'm just railing against communists, I'm not. I use the term communazi because you never know how they're interwoven. So it's all about awareness, people. And I would say that awareness is the first step in becoming powerful against the deep state evil dark factions. And if you're sitting there scoffing, and if you've got this far through the video, that means there's still hope for you. If you've gotten this far in the video, that means that there's a, there's a chink in your armor. There's a crack in the bubble that's over your head that's letting in some of the light. Yeah. You don't have to like me. You don't have to like what I'm saying. For God's sakes, people, especially for you young ones that say, well, the United States, oh, it's, it's, oh, it's disgusting, and I never want to live in the United States because it's racist and it's misogynistic and it's this and it's that. You've been hoodwinked. You've been hoodwinked into becoming an American dissident. Yeah, you, 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 you have. You've been hoodwinked fully. Yeah, capitalism is the best system in the world, but I would, I would concede, and I've been saying it for years, capitalism being perpetrated the present American way is unacceptable. It's capitalism without accountability or responsibility, and, and that's not good. Um, so learn how to reach to your higher power, to your source. 
reach out to your God connection because I promise you people, you have a God connection. That means learn how to pray. Yeah, take that bold step and learn how to meditate. Yeah. And when you do, when you do, you're going to change your consciousness. You'll expand your consciousness. And then what's going to happen is you'll start to see clearly. You'll have the eyes to, to see and the ears to hear. You will. And we will turn this tyrannical, communazi, new world order takeover around. If you think that the usual suspects have your best interest in mind, like Bill Gates and Klaus Schwab and George Soros and the Rothschilds and the Rockefellers and, and all of the top politicians from the left and the right, from the Republicans and the Democrats, from Fox and CNN and MSNBC, if you think they have your best interest in mind, you need an MRI of your brain and an EEG and a toxicology uh, spread, blood work. A checkup from the neck up? Yeah, from top to bottom. So um, I would say, people, very sincerely, become aware, people, because this whole thing's coming to a head. You don't have to like Donald J. Trump. You don't. And you don't have to love the old demented fool that's pretending to be in the White House. You don't have to like either one of those people. You don't have to hate or love the Clintons or the Bushes eh, to both of them. No. You need to have the eyes to see and the ears to hear, people. And all I can say is God bless you all. God bless humanity. God bless the United States of America. People, if the United States fails and falls... The world, as we know it, is cooked. It's burnt to a crisp like a goose in a blast furnace. Don't let it happen, people. God bless. See you next time on The Jersey Alchemist. Great job, John. Thank you for that episode. That was amazing. Hit like, please. Hit like, like, follow, and, follow and, and, and you got to share you gotta something. Share and subscribe, people. Do the right thing. Because I got to tell you what, we had, we had a beautiful unbelievable growth curve and then pow platform realized what we were saying and they they governed us yeah mm -hmm. they governed us like a governor on on a mini bike where they can only go like you know 20 25 miles an hour or something they they cut our viewership they cut our international viewership they did and um that's unacceptable, people. That's Kamianazi book burning 101. It's just now in a big tech form. So uh, start using your ability to discern. Start using your intuitive capabilities. You have them. Amen, Phil. Amen. Okay. Till right. next time, Jersey Alchemist. Peace.